Good morning, good day, good evening, depending on where you're watching uh, this uh, video. Uh, I hope that uh, it's going well for you. I wanted to take a few moments, uh, a few minutes this morning to um, share some things with you that God laid on my heart. I've entitled it, uh, What to Do Between the Amen and There It Is. Uh, first of all, when when we are believing God for something, we have to first find scriptures because our faith has to be based upon the Word of God. And uh, we come to God, we position God, we come to Him in the name of Jesus because that gives us access to the throne of grace. And uh, then we, 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 we pray in accordance to His Word, the things that belong to us. And uh, a very, very important principle is Mark, Mark 11, 24. What's the other things you desire when you pray, believe that you receive them and you'll have them. So you have to release your faith once you have prayed, you have to believe that you have received what you have prayed for without seeing it first, because our faith is based upon what the Word of God says, not what we see or feel. Uh, also, you find this principle found in uh, 1 John, the 5th chapter, uh, verse uh, 14 and 15. 1st Epistle of John, the 1st chapter, verse, uh, the 5th chapter rather, verse 14 and 15. This is a confidence, so we can say this is a faith that we have in Him, that if we ask anything according to His will, He hears us. Now we know His will is His Word. Uh, you find that in uh, Matthew, the 7th chapter, verse 21 through 27, that reveals that God's Word is His will. So we can say this way, this is the faith that we have in Him, that if we ask anything according to His Word, He hears us. How do we know God heard us? Because we based, based our prayer on what God says in His Word. And it says, and if we know that he hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we have asked of him. So you have to take it when you pray. You have to receive it when you pray, whatever it is that you're believing God for, whether it be healing, whether it be finances, whether it be for a situation in your life to turn around. You have to believe that you receive it. Then what do you do from the moment that you pray? And and the uh, as I said, I stated in my title between the amen and the there it is. In other words, between the time that you say amen, believe that you receive, and the manifestation. What is it that you do? This is the, the area that I want to focus on. Now, the Bible tells us in Hebrews, the uh, sixth chapter, I think it's verse 12, that through faith and patience, we inherit the promise. Through faith and patience. Well, why does it say that? Well, because the only way to receive from God is through faith. You can't receive from God through feeling or emotion. It's always through faith. And um, we need faith, but we also need patience. Why? Because mo most things, not everything, but most things that we believe God for, doesn't manifest right away. You know, uh, There are things that may take days, weeks, months, even years to manifest in our lives, depending on what we're believing God for. Now, there's, there's a reason why some things take uh, a while. First of all, we see uh, in the life of Abraham and Sarah that it took them 25 years to get the promise. Uh, why did it take that long? Well, as you study it out, you'll find out that Abraham didn't start out totally knowing how to believe God. I mean, you know, over in Genesis 15, he was over there making negative confessions, saying he had no, he had no heir when God had given him an heir by faith, but he didn't know how to believe God. So God had to teach him how to operate by faith, and that takes time. He also had to deal with his character. You know, they both had character issues. Uh, Sarai was her, Sarah's name before God changed it. means contentious. She was a contentious woman. We see that in Acts 16. And at the end, uh, God changed her name to Sarah, just a year before she had the baby, which means of noble character. So God dealt with her character. And then, of course, Abraham didn't have a uh, good character either because he twice gave away his wife to another man to save his skin. Uh, and that's not, uh, you know, a, a good uh, quality of a, of a man. So God had to teach him faith, and he had to teach, uh, he had to deal with their character. And it took God 24 years to bring that about, and then they were ready for a due season. They were ready for a manifestation. So that time, sometimes that's why it takes a while for us to, uh, to obtain what God has promised us, because we have to learn how to believe God, and that takes time. Now, the more time and effort that you give to the Word, and, and, and you listen to good teaching, you learn from those that are, you know, uh, are, are, are older in the Lord and in the ministry, and are sound in doctrine, the, the quicker that you'll grow. 
but some people don't give very much time for the word. They and then they don't practice the word that they hear, and their faith never grows. They, they, they stay infants, always relying on somebody else's faith, somebody else's prayer uh, to, to do it for them, when they should be developing their own faith uh, to get it. So uh, that, that's one reason. So, and there are, there, there are other reasons, and I don't have time to get into all of them. But the, what I want to focus on, what do you do between the time that you believe that you receive and the time it manifests? Well, the Bible says in Hebrews 10.23, Let us hold fast the confession of our faith without wavering. That means without doubting. For he's faithful and promise. You have to continue to speak the word. Amen. Uh, and, and, you, and what the devil tries to do is he tries to get you to look contrary to circumstances so that you speak what you see or what you feel. That is contradictory to what you have believed. And so you have to be very, very careful that you don't speak your emotions. For example, if you're standing on the word for healing, I try to avoid asking people this, how do you feel? <laughs> because that's a very leading question. Because if you don't feel good, the natural thing to do is begin to focus on, on how terrible you feel and begin to express that. And you shouldn't be talking about your symptoms and your sickness. You should be talking about faith uh, in God's word. You should be talking about uh, what the word says, First Peter two twenty four. By whose stripes I was healed. You should be meditating and speaking the word continually, because Jesus never said speak about the mountain in Mark eleven twenty three. He said speak to the mountain. So you should be speaking the word to that sickness and disease, and and so we have to hold fast to the confession of our faith without wavering, without doubting. That means that when you doubt, now you don't doubt because you have a doubt in your, a thought in your mind. You doubt when when you speak contrary to the word of God. Or when you take actions that are contradictory to the Word of God. That's when you doubt. Just because a doubt comes into your mind doesn't mean that you're doubting. What you have to do with that is cast it down. As it says in 2 Corinthians 10, verse 3 through 5. Cast down that, that thought. Because that's why the, the thought comes. Because the devil wants you to take that thought and doubt and speak it. So he can short circuit your faith. Because he knows as long as you're believing, God is working behind the scenes to bring about that which you believe them for. The Bible says in Jeremiah one twelve that God watches over his word to perform it. You can rest assured if you if you're believing God's word, he is uh, 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 bringing it to pass in your life. But like I said, sometimes it takes a while and there are different reasons for that. So hold fast to the confession of your faith. If you catch yourself speaking contrary to the word, Romans, I think it's 14.23 says, whatsoever is not of faith is sin. So you have to treat unbelief as sin. The Bible says that Israel, Hebrews 3, had an evil heart of unbelief and departed from the living God. Uh, unbelief is sin. So if you catch yourself speaking contrary to the word, say, I, I cancel the assignments of those words. Lord, I repent of unbelief in the name of Jesus. I resist and I command to go from me. And, and, and the blood will, will wash that away and you get back on your confession and you keep your faith working. Amen? Just because you make a mistake, a, a faith mistake doesn't mean it's all over. If you repent, confess it, Cancel the assignments of the words and keep moving forward. The process is still working. Amen. So hold fast the confession of your faith. What else does it say to do? Well, it says to be thankful, to give God thanksgiving. Philippians 4, verse 6 to 8 says this. Be anxious for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication. With thanksgiving, let your request be known to God. So mix thanksgiving. Begin to thank God. God, I thank you that I have my healing. Oh, God, I thank you that I have this amount of money that I believe you for. Oh, I thank you that I have this husband or this wife that I believe God for. Whatever it is that you're believing God for, thank him and tell him that you believe that you receive it. You, you thank him for it. Thank him that he's working on your behalf. Amen. And, and continue to thank God uh, by faith during the process. And that'll keep your faith strong and it'll keep you in peace. It says, and the peace of God, which is past all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. See, the devil can't stand, can't stand praise. The Bible says in Psalm 8 that, God, that, that praise uh, stills the adventure. I mean, you start praising God and thanking God, it, it, the devil will not want to be around you. Amen. He can't stand that. It shuts him up. So begin to praise God. Don't get into complaining and murmuring and talking about how long it takes and this, that, and the other. No, just keep praising and thanking God that you have what you have believed God for. Why? Because God cannot lie. The Bible says so in Titus 1, 2 and Hebrews 6, 18. It is impossible for God to lie. Numbers 23, 19 says, God is not a man that he shall lie. Has he spoken it? And shall he not bring it to pass? Now I realize today that, that men, even Christian men, even Christian ministers, a lot of times don't keep their word. But God, we don't want to bring God down on that level. God keeps his word. 
Every word of God is true. He never fails as long as you make faith with it. Now the Bible says in Hebrews 4 2 that the word did not profit Israel not being mixed with faith. If you don't mix faith with the word, it doesn't profit you. Amen. And then you got to mix faith with the word. And then it says, verse 8, find the brethren, whatever things are true, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are pure, whatever things are just, whatever things are a good report, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. So guard your mind. That's the other thing you have to do. You have to guard your mind. So again, what do you do? You confess the word continually. Confess in line with the word of God. Don't talk your feelings. Don't talk the problems. Speak in line with the word. Offer to God thanksgiving. Amen. Uh, don't do it by feeling. Don't wait for a feeling to come some kind of emotion, some kind of, you know, Holy Ghost chill. No, no, praise Him by faith. It's called the sacrifice of praise because sometimes it costs us to praise God. We don't feel like it, but do it anyway. Amen. And then, and then, guard, guard your mind. Guard your mind. Be careful about the thoughts that you allow to come into your mind. Cast down imaginations. Anything that would exalt itself against the knowledge of God, bring it into captivity. And, and, and here's the last thing that you need to do. Galatians, the sixth chapter, uh, verse 9, I believe it is, says this, And let us not grow weary while doing good, for in due season we shall reap if we do not lose heart. Don't stop doing good during the process. Amen. Continue to do good. Don't grow weary because there is a due season. You can rest assured that if you'll continue to believe God and you're willing to stand as long as it takes what God has promised, He'll bring to pass in your life. Well, I hope that I've energized your faith, encouraged you in the Lord. I appreciate the comments that many of you have left already. Thank you. God bless you. Have a wonderful day.